It's warming up out here. I don't think I'm going to need this sweater. It was a lot cooler earlier this morning. But now that beautiful sun is poking her head out. It's warming up. I wanted to talk about the fall garden today. There's actually quite a bit you can grow in the fall winter, y'all. Especially if you live in a mild climate like I do. If you get down into, I would say, single digit weather in the winter, you're gonna need a high tunnel or something. But I'm up in North Georgia and we don't really get that cold up here. We generally, the coldest times will be in the teens. And everything that I'm sharing with y'all today can handle that kind of weather. I'm gonna start with one of the ones that I really love and that I don't think a lot of people do enough of. It's called fava beans. I've already got them planted out right here. I've got them throughout. Now, I like to garden by mixing things all up. I don't just have a row of something. I like to break things up. So I will be putting some rainbow swiss chard around these fava beans because these guys, if you see here, this one's getting a little tall. I've got more right over here. Now, what I love about fava beans, y'all, is they are very tasty. And I had never even heard of them before until I saw that movie, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> a head of a lecture talks about fava beans, but they are very tasty. They are a meaty bean, y'all. Very large, larger than your, your lima bean. If you don't have meat on hand, you can use fava beans in place of that in like stews and soups and such. But these guys are quite small right now, but they will grow tall and get beautiful white and black flowers and create these lovely large seed pods. And since it is a legume, it is a nitrogen fixer. So that was one of the very first things that I ever grew in my fall garden were fava beans. I have them in the middle of my mounds here and I'm gonna start weaving them through the panels here to give them a little bit of extra support. Oh, that sun feels nice. So on my teepee here, that's, well, breaking apart. It's, it's about done, y'all. I don't think we'll be growing anything on it next year, but, but the soil around this is so good. I've got so many worms in it, so I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grow rutabagas around here. And that's what I did, and you can see them popping up right here. Of course, I'm gonna have to thin them out quite a bit. Anytime I throw my brassicas out, like rutabagas, collards, and mustards, I go a little bit overboard, as you see here. I've got quite a bit of thinning out to do, but that's okay. But rutabagas, y'all, they are so tasty. I didn't know about them either until I was talking to my local hardware store, his name's Paul. He was telling me about rutabagas and how his mom used to cook them up like you would a potato. And I thought, you know what, that sounds quite tasty. I love me some potatoes. So, started growing rutabagas, y'all, and you know what? If you live in the south, especially, they're so easy to grow. You just literally, I just threw seeds out and they can grow quite large. And yes, I, you can eat them like a potato. I did that last year and it was delicious. In fact, my picky eater actually ate some and liked it. See here, I've got some cabbage mixed in with some greens. This cabbage here is called cabbage capture and I really like this one. It does real well out here. It heads up beautifully and it doesn't bolt because my situation in my area is that it can heat up real quick and if my cabbages, all my heading up brassicas like my Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all those things, if they haven't started heading up yet in the springtime, well, they're going to start bolting and I'm not going to get anything off of them. So that's why for any of my heading up veggies, I always start them, if I'm going to start them from seed, I start that in midsummer at the very end of July. And that seems to be the sweet spot to get them to be exactly where I need them to be. If you already hadn't started these guys from seed, then you can just go ahead and get them from the store. That works too. Just remember, always check for cabbage worms, cabbage worm eggs when you're bringing them home from the store. But I like to mix in the lettuces and then I'm gonna be putting in some violas as well here. So this area is nice and mixed up and I've really found that I have not gotten as many pests that way. Hmm. These Joro spiders have just been real crazy this year. 
They've just taken over this arch. Pretty things, aren't they? They really are harmless. They're, we scare them more than they scare us, really. In fact, they're considered one of the shyest spiders out there. And really, their fangs are too small. If they were to bite you, you couldn't really pierce the skin. Anyway, this is about fall gardening, not about spiders. I'm getting distracted. Can you believe this, though? Look at this. Pepper plants just go absolutely bonkers. Gonna be needing to make some more Tabasco sauce here. This particular row, I really like to put a lot of my broccoli down this row. Broccoli. All the things I've been mentioning are all things that you can grow in the fall winter. Some of the lovely herbs you can grow are cilantro, dill, parsley, and then you've got your evergreen herbs like sage and rosemary and there are even some varieties of oregano that will continue to grow and be green throughout the winter. But I like to do a ton of cilantro, in fact this is dill. So I'm doing some dill but I'm doing a lot more cilantro. I just love me some cilantro. We're gonna have to do a little bit of ducking again here otherwise we're gonna get our face full of spiderweb. Oh by the way y'all I have been able to mulch every single row and I'm working on right now if you see I'll just duck here I'm putting down fresh mulch on all of my paths here that I walk on a lot so this can be so nice and it looks so nice I just got a bunch of spiderweb all over me and you guys I'm telling you they're just they're everywhere this year there's no getting away Tomorrow doesn't have much garden manners. You know what she's looking for? She's looking for some tomatoes. Funny thing is, is she didn't like tomatoes in the beginning of the season. But now I see her, she'll climb the panels a little bit, pick a tomato off. She only likes the ripe ones. Anyway, here, if you see, I've got carrots growing. Now in my particular area, See, that one wasn't ripe. Anyway, in my particular area, I'm in Georgia, so I've got Georgia clay, and I have been amending my bed heavily, but I still like to grow the short little squatty carrots. <laughs> I think the classic one, and one of the ones that I have grown out here is called chutney. I think that's how you pronounce it, not 100% sure. So if you have very dense soil, you're gonna wanna go with a carrot that is a little bit more short and stubby and one of the ones that a lot of people like to grow is the chutney. I grew out a ton of carrot seeds this year. You see here, they're popping up. Now in the middle of this mound I'm going to be doing some type of herb. I've got some dill and cilantro. I've already started putting those out here soon. I've kind of done a combination this year of... That's a pepper marl. You're not going to want to eat that one. I kind of did a combination this year of throwing out some cilantro and dill seeds, but also doing some in pots. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to totally tell you guys about, which is one of my favorites, I thought I was forgetting one, is borage. Borage likes cool weather. In fact, when it starts getting real hot in the summertime, it dies off, and what happens is it will keep reseeding itself. I mean, they drop a ton of seeds, and you'll see them popping up more borage, but they kind of die off. Eventually, when the weather starts cooling off, luckily they did drop enough seeds. Tomorrow, you're silly. That some do pop up when the weather finally starts cooling off. So I'll show you that in a minute that I've got some borage that just keeps receding itself. And that's something that I love. Anything that will just keep receding itself every year is one less thing that I have to worry about. I kind of went nut nuts on the borage this year. Oh, if you see here, this is a patch. I kind of avoided putting down mulch right here because these guys are still coming up. When they're fully up, I'll go ahead and mulch around them, you see? Came along right here, 
So that's gonna be a nice big patch of borage. And this is the white borage variety, not the blue. I prefer it. I don't know, it's, it gets taller. And the blue is beautiful too, it's got a striking color. But I found that the white is more vigorous. Sections I've had blue, they don't reseed themselves as well. The white goes absolutely bonkers. And I like that. Now as far as cover crops go, y'all, there's some fun ones that you can do. My ultimate favorite is hairy vetch. Also Australian winter peas that grow real well. Now their pea is similar to that of a sugar snap pea, but it's not as good. It really isn't. I went out some sugar snap peas. Now these said they were frost tolerant, which I am very suspicious. I got more down here. The random mustard green right here that just decided to come back from last year. I do love me some mustards. Now for me, you can do kale. I, I know a lot of people that like to do kale. That's something that grows in the fall, winter. Personally, I prefer to grow mustards and collards and you can use that instead in all the recipes that you would use kale. Just because it grows so well out here in the south it's just so easy to grow. I had a harder time growing the kale in my garden. I might try it again, but mustards and collards, if you live in the south, they're so easy. Get back here now. I got me some parsley. Another little one over here. So my whole arched row tunnel is gonna be mainly broccolis and a lot of herbs and any arch that does not have my sugar snap peas right here, I'm gonna be doing hairy veg. Say you just don't really want to do a garden this year, but maybe you still just want some greenery out there and not have to worry about it. You can put out hairy veg. And as much as I've heard people say that it will take over your garden and all that, I've been doing it a few years now in a row. I think one time I had it come back in one little small section, but that's it. It's not invasive like I had read online. So yeah, you can just throw this hairy vet seeds out, y'all. Don't even need to worry about burying them. It'd probably get a better germination rate if you did sprinkle a little bit of topsoil. What I like to do, and what I've done it throughout my garden, I'll show you a little bit more, is I like to just go to Lowe's and get their topsoil bags, their organic topsoil bags. They're only $2.88 a bag. So I just got like 10 of them. And that was enough to do my garden here. In fact, I still got a few more bags, which is perfect because I got to put out my violas. And violas do just fine in the winter. And you see, I got more fava beans right here. So what I really love about that hairy vetch though, is in the springtime, y'all, it blooms and it's just so beautiful. I just don't get sick of it. And it's just such an easy plant. And again, and it's a legume, so it's a nitrogen fixer. So if you just don't want to do anything to your garden, throw out some hairy vetch, let it do its thing over fall, winter, and then what I just do is I just break it down. Now I have cattle panels. That's pretty much what I do out here is a vertical garden. I just find that it's a great way to grow more food in a smaller space. Mara, there's no tomatoes up there, baby. I don't know what she's thinking. Those are beans. Yes, this arch here, I love just putting tons of hairy vetch out. In fact, I ordered it. I always like to get mine from Outside Pride. It's way cheaper than like Johnny Seed. I find that most things that I wanna, <laughs> it's my goats. I'll bring them some beans here in a minute. See, I try not to go out there when they're screaming like this because then they're gonna be training me, you know? Every time I go out there, every time they scream, I'm going to bring a treat, so we're going to just have to be quiet for a minute. Anyway, I love doing my hairy vetch on this tunnel. It's just too fun. You hear the real loud one? That's Pippi. That's Annie. She's more quiet. Where I think I was going with this, see if I can remember my train of thought. Ooh, there's so many little mosquitoes out right now. 
when I'm done with the hairy vetch and I'm ready to put other things out, I just rip it down. It's so easy. It comes down with ease. And I make little nests with it and plant my plants. Normally squash. I do a lot of squash in this tunnel. Tomatoes, whatever. Eventually, just burying it with mulch. That hairy vetch will break down into the soil and feed the soil. I just love putting organic matter down, straight down on my mounds. That's how I do things. I just, I guess you'd call that no dig gardening. I'm a no dig gardener. <laughs> now here's a little patch of white sage that I have growing. I got several little patches like this. I love me some white sage. So good. So this stuff will just keep growing and expanding. Eventually I'll probably kind of have to cut it back and keep it under control, but I've been really wanting to make sure I get more and more evergreen herbs growing in my garden. So I like to mix my herbs in with all my veggies. Like this over here, if you see, this is my spring summer garden, so it will die off in the fall winter, except this comfrey will come back. If you see, I've got the comfrey mixed in. We got a jalapeno pepper here. I mean, I got some big ones on here too. Goodness gracious, come see this. So got some zucchini growing here as well. So I really just like to mix things up with my fall garden. Everyone wants to be really loud this morning. With my fall winter garden and my spring summer. Makes me wonder if there's something lurking about. I have had some issues with some raccoons. They even come around during the day. And I know sometimes my goats will get a little spooked. And the chickens, of course. Although we haven't had any more raccoons harm our chickens since I've, we've done a few things to keep them out. But I wanted to show you this. I put out a bunch of mulch, very thick on these mounds. Now this is all green mulch. This is not stuff that I just bought from Lowe's or Home Depot or something. If you're gonna put stuff out, I highly recommend get green mulch. It's way better for your soul because the whole gosh darn tree that they put in through a wood chipper <laughs> and then you put that all down on your soil and it breaks down beautifully really feeding your soil so but if you see that's what I did out here and that's what I like to continually do to keep building upon these mounds but since I put so much mulch down obviously that makes it difficult I can't really put seeds down at that point so what I like to do and I did this a few years back works really well is I just kind of create a nice little trench and I fill that trench with topsoil so now, also, when I, if I do get a rain that maybe is a little bit harder than I would like for when I first start planting, for when I first plant something, they're pretty protected. I don't have any issues with my seeds washing away. So if you see, that's what I've done here. And obviously I've got, <laughs> again, a lot of thinning out to do here. I've got a mixture of mustards, collars, and rutabagas throughout here. So I don't really know which one this is didn't really label anything because I know what things look like as they mature so I'm not too worried about that yes, so I'm gonna be coming through here and in fact I gotta do that soon because I don't want to get these I don't want these to get all leggy but that's kind of how I like to do things it works really well yeah I just sprinkle a nice thick amount of topsoil sprinkle my seeds and then I put a little bit more topsoil on top they germinate so fast I love it so over here in the middle, I've got more rutabagas, and on the side, I've got some cherry red radishes. And you can see they're starting to pop up. Now radishes grow very quickly, so I'll probably do several different batches this year. I'll harvest these, do another, harvest those, do another. So that's kind of fun about the radishes. You can do the same thing with beets, although I haven't put any beets out yet this year. I'm not sure if I want to do any. I'm still on the fence about that. This is a cabbage paddock variety that's going to get very, very large. So Brussels sprouts here. I'll be putting my Swiss chard out around my fava beans and my Brussels sprouts because they get taller. They'll grow well together. Swiss chard also grows tall. But around my cabbages and broccoli, be mixing in some lettuce and the violas. Those stay down a little bit more low like the cabbage does. I just found that they grew real well together. You can grow all different kinds of lettuces. Spinach is another one. I haven't started any spinach from seed. 
But that is one since it doesn't need to head up into something. I could start that from seed right now and be fine. Now this year, this year I did some shallots, which I've never done before, so I'm really excited. They have not popped up yet. They kind of have a funny little interesting little seed. They're down here in the soil. I need to water again tonight to make sure that this soil stays moist, especially while they're germinating. I don't want them drying out. Let me show you just a few more things before I gotta wrap it up. What you been doing, Marl? What you been running around doing? So I see here's some parsley, some dill, and I had Lily help me start more cilantro and borage in here. She just did that for me the other day. So gotta come out here and make sure to pull the leaves off these little ones because they can kind of suffocate my seedlings. These here. I think I've got four trays, so I've got over a hundred of them. It is one of my favorite lettuces that I like to do. It's called Red Sail. And it did fabulous last year, so I decided to kind of go all out on it. Just because it was slow to bolt. Even when it was getting real hot outside, we were still eating lettuce. I went ahead and did my Swiss Chardon pots as well. I'm not sure if y'all can tell, but they're different colors. That's what I like about the rainbow variety, because you get different colors. And the last thing, you guys, is garlic. You gotta get your garlic out right now, because garlic takes nine months to fully mature. So I always plant mine out in September. Now I like to soak mine first. It really does help. It gets those root systems helps those roots come alive and even some of them can start sprouting a bit and that way things are popping up a lot faster when I plant them out into the garden and the garlic as well I just mix that in with my mounds I mean they're so tiny it's easy to just squeeze them in with other things and they do so well not to mention garlic can act as a deterrent for pests so we'll be planting those out next week anyway y'all I hope y'all are doing well thank you so much for watching I hope that you're able to do a fall garden this year. Because for me personally, fall is my favorite season. I just love it so much and I just can't get enough gardening. So I'm gonna just keep gardening all year round. <laughs> all right, y'all, take care and we'll see you next time. <laughs> you know what means today? You can't climb on the camera now. It doesn't work that way. I'm just gonna leave these with you guys. I have to go. I gotta go.